It's the Australian Union's campaign update. Francis Leach here with ACTU President Michelle O'Neill. And Michelle, we're into single digits on the countdown to election day. Hey, I going? can't believe it, Francis. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, Francis. I um, What are we? We're nine, nine days. days. Nine days to go. And it's gone really fast, I think. Um, not that the last three years or the last nine years have gone fast. They've gone incredibly slow. <laughs> but now that we're at the crunch time, it feels like... Things are speeding up. You must be thrilled that wages and the cost of living, the things that unions, that Australian unions, we care about the most, are the central theme of this campaign. Well, it's great that finally we've got politicians, the media, talking about the issues that matter so much to working people. Like that, that shocking reality of the cost of living going up so much and wages not keeping up and just what that means every day choices between whether you fill the car up whether you buy the food that you need for your kids whether you ever get to plan a holiday all of these things are what you know is the reality of working life and I really am really pleased that it's up there as the issue that's been talked about in this election because it matters so much. now since we spoke last time there have been two debates and in both debates, the Prime Minister could not bring himself to say every worker deserves to be at least on the minimum, at the very least on the minimum wage. He couldn't even bring himself to say it. And then he flipped it and did that old trick where he said, if you want a pay rise, you're going to lose your job. You're going to lose your job because you're asking for a decent wage. It it is shocking, isn't it? Like when you think about what's happened over the last few days, as you rightly say, he starts off refusing to commit to the most basic thing. Imagine being a man who's paid $550,000 a year and who is the fifth highest paid leader in the world in terms of prime minister and that you begrudge begrudge the lowest paid workers in the country getting a pay rise, that you can't even say, yep, people um, who are relying on the minimum wage and the annual wage decision should get a pay increase. Like that is outrageous that he um, is so out of touch, so far away to, from what's happening to people, so removed in his own experience that he won't make a commitment to that. And then to suggest that what is just wrong in the facts, that somehow giving people a pay increase is going to be bad for jobs, that is wrong. His own uh, Treasury Secretary, like the guy who heads the department that's in charge of all the finances for the government, says that that's wrong. The head of the Reserve Bank says that that's wrong. They both say if you have wages that keep up with the cost of living, with inflation and a bit more for productivity on top, it's good for the economy, it's good for workers, it's good for small business, it's actually good for everyone. So he was lying there. So when you have that conversation with people, remind them that pro productivity in Australia has been on the increase year on year on year on year for decades. So we are producing more, working harder, and are in a position to have a wage rise because productivity is ahead of the curve where it needs to be in order to make sure that any wage rise doesn't spike inflation. But it just seems that he Francis, won't acknowledge productivity it. has gone up six times higher than wages in the last six years. And it, but you know, workers are just not getting their fair share. Yeah. This is what it's about. It's just that fundamental principle that do you think it's okay for CEOs to get a 24% mm. wage increase, which is what they got in the last 12 months? Do you think it's okay for politicians to get a 30% wage increase, which is what they've had over the last period of time? So no, it is not okay that the only people who are missing out are workers who, of course, uh, keep, as we saw during the pandemic, so many workers that we rely on to keep everything going you know like this is the most basic stuff about an economy if you don't have workers doing their labor then nothing happens everything grinds to a halt so I just think it's it's shocking it's out of touch it's show it says everything that we need to know about Scott Morrison that he is taking home ten thousand dollars a week and he begrudges uh, the lowest paid workers in this country one extra dollar an hour. Now, there was a really interesting survey that the ACT, Australian Unions, did this week and uh, published this week around uh, the attitude of Australian working women to the Morrison government. It had some telling figures. And I, I think this is being borne out also in polling that's been done across the electorates more generally, that Scott Morrison is very much on the nose with working women in Australia. He is. 
And what this poll showed is that uh, working women just uh, do not have any confidence. They don't believe that Scott Morrison can be relied upon to deal with the issues that are matter to them. And the three top issues were about cost of living, wages and housing affordability. And on all three, they said um, overwhelmingly, like 74% of women said, we can't rely on the Morrison government to do anything about addressing the cost of living crisis. We don't trust that they're gonna do it. And uh, that is a higher level than the way men think about it, but of course plenty of men think that as well. But when you think about where women are, uh, they're more likely to be in insecure work, so they're more likely to be in jobs that are low paid and not get the hours that they need and, and of course dealing with all of the costs going up and, and often they're on the front line of that, whether it's childcare costs or the shopping, etc. then it, it really is not that surprising that they've seen the true colours of this bloke. Um, you know, that they know that when it comes to safety at work, when it comes to respect for women, when it comes to issues around wages and secure jobs and what that means, when it comes to early childhood education and care, he can talk the talk, but he delivers nothing. He's had nine years, or that government's had nine years to do it. And one of the issues that has been talked about in the campaign is childcare. And Scott Morrison wants to frame that purely as a cost discussion, whereas we know that what it is is a driver of economic activity and ec ec economic independence for women. Well, when you talk to women, and all the studies show this as well, about what's happening for women at work, so many more women want to work more hours and have more work and more income, but it becomes uneconomic for them because if they work an extra day or two to go up towards full time, then they're paying more in childcare than they're earning. And so it, it's crazy cost and it holds women back in terms of them being able to work, which of course is bad for them, bad for their families, it's bad uh, for it, men and it's bad for the economy. And it means that if women were able to work at the rate and the level and the hours they wanted to, then there's a whole lot more money churning around in the economy. It grows jobs, it grows um, consumption and it means everyone's better off. But meanwhile, we just uh, have one of the most expensive, least accessible childcare systems in the developed world. Okay, we're just over a week away from the uh, campaign being done and the election day arriving. So you've been out across the country, you've been to Queensland, you were in WA this week. I mean, you're hearing from workers all over the country. Uh, what's your sense of where things are now in terms of us being a week or more away from some serious change that we need? Well, it's been great to be out there. And Perth, I had the, um, the great honour of being with the aged care workers who were on strike. Uh, and who had a rally in the city um, of Perth, and they were fantastic, passionate, good hard. response. Oh, good response oh yeah, great response. Yeah. People know how yeah. hard that job is. You know, like we all know it. We've all lived it in terms of the people that we love and see what happens, and and let alone COVID, which is not what created the crisis in aged care, but it exposed it as how bad it was. And the, again, that Morrison disrespect. You know that that notion of never wanting the Royal Commission, then finally getting it and then ignoring what it said needed to be done. You don't get quality care for older Australians unless you have quality jobs for the people caring for them. So that was great. And of course, they're very angry about what's happening to wages and conditions and understaffing and the care of elder, older Australians in aged care. Um, I visited some workers in a chicken factory in um, Perth as well, Ingham Chicken. And, and again, these uh, people that do really important work, hard work. Um, and what those workers were telling me was just on this key issue again, Francis. They were just saying, look, it, we're seeing our grocery bills go up $100, $150 a week compared to what it was a few weeks or months ago. We have to choose about whether we, we can fill the car up and we don't fill the car up, how do we get to work? Uh, and they were just really feeling like that this was what they wanted to see change. I, I, I think that it's still, as much as we want to see a change of government, I don't think anyone should think 
it's done. No. Uh, it's not in the bag. We've got you know a short period of time, just over a week. Um, every conversation matters is what I've found. And there's still a lot of people that aren't quite sure. They're not confident that changing the government is going to deliver real change. One of the things we can do as unionists is make sure we talk about the issues that we're confident it will deliver change on. Issues to do with wages, secure jobs, things like uh, childcare that we were just talking about, aged care, housing affordability, all of this are things that can change, but we've got to change the government to deliver it. We do indeed. So look, at just over a week to go, back out in the road. Yeah, I'm going to be uh, a, few, <laughs> a few places this week. We're just finalising it. But yeah, we, we'll be out in the road because um, it's great to be out talking to members and to workers about these issues. And as I said, every single conversation matters. They do indeed. Good luck uh, over the next week campaigning. And as Michelle said, AustralianUnions.org.au for all the information as this next couple of week or so rolls out. Have those conversations with the people in your life. They're the most powerful conversations you can have. It's your influence on those that you love and know and your conviction about the issues that matter that might change your vote and that vote might really change the government. So get involved and we will talk to you next week in the final week of the campaign. Bye for now. See you everyone. Authorised by S. McManus, Australian Council of Trade Unions, Melbourne.